In the last months in Frankfurt, prior to his departure for Weimar, Goethe described the state of his soul. It is, he says, like a sock that is being turned inside out, the outer becoming inner, the inner outer. His thoughts and feelings seek external manifestation, the inner to become outer, and through externalization, his inner states will hopefully lose their fleeting, private, and capricious character and be made precise, ordered, and available to others. More wine? Hmm. What about this? Modern means of locomotion have completely upset relationships which had been familiar since time immemorial. Formerly, a landscape had a value in itself. A white and quiet road could cross it without changing the surroundings at all. Now the railway trains and automobiles with their plumes of smoke or dust take all the dynamic quality for themselves and the landscape becomes secondary and derivative. Are you looking for art or fear? Fear. Art. Go left over the bridge towards Tumbling Mill. You can follow the path all the way to the sea if you want to go that far. When you start on a long journey, trees are trees, water is water, and mountains are mountains. After you have gone some distance, trees are no longer trees, water no longer water, and mountains no longer mountains. But after you have travelled a great distance, trees are once again trees, water once again water, and mountains once again mountains. I like new thinking, advanced engineering, how is it helping? Fallow factories knocked down, airport extensions. There seems less and less of what we need most. Why don't you write a piece for the papers about it if you feel so strongly? It's generally unwise to write about the countryside. Initially, the look, the effect of it, you can't describe it. And there is that mysterious force provoking subjectivity. Otters have the right idea. 
If you've ever witnessed an otter leaving, you'll know it's final. At the first sign of human predation, they vanish, never to come back. I think the tourist information leaflet said something about a sonnet that was written in this valley. About otters. Hang on. Why should we have to cross a bridge of poor design? A bridge under other circumstances we wouldn't normally cross. We dwell on battles we cannot win. Battles we can only lose. If you leave aside what is, what is not art, then what is left is what you have in front of you. Even anti-art is historic now. Like peace after war. On the riverbank, like an undersized Dorset cliff, the couple sit admiring wagtails. There is still something of beauty here. Yes, of course there is. Unconscious thoughts for unconditioned minds. Surely this countryside, though much altered, still endures. Who was it who said, the best way to forget something is to raise a memorial? As long as this goes on, I ask, do I have something to say? Or is it that I don't like what's being said? From a balcony, from a chair, I look out at Capri. Philosophically, since the Faraglioni exist, this balcony must also exist. And on the balcony, this chair. But not in deep water, not sunk to its waist. Capri's outline, in one lifetime, will never falter. And the total limit of Capri I see is all I shall ever see. One violent streak, maybe, recording an act of violence committed a thousand years ago. But then, uninterrupted, comes a thousand years of Peace. I picture the limestone paths, ships, shops, citrus bushes, tomato crops, all of them conceptions, all of them realized, all of them real, but none that are circumspect, none yet aware, ergo this balcony, ergo this chair. Still something of beauty? This is the optimist's, the urban tourist's view. But the countryside is not for that. It should define, as it always has, the redemptive power of art. Do you remember the old schoolhouse? The gentle geometry, that faltering physicality. What about the noble park beyond? barrage of barracking and bitching over by the cedar. The pagan cry of nature. It says here that Coleridge came at the truth through non-rational means. Being here makes me think that the cause of all this considerable theorising is that we cannot see ourselves as a subject. How do you mean? I can see you. I can see this black-capped resident following us. I see two wagtails. A bridge, these cows. I can see the countryside. You can't see any otters. No, the otters have gone. But they're similar to us, if you like. The subject seen by others we cannot see. What would you think if you could see yourself? given the freedom to judge. Well, that would be impossible, wouldn't it? The active mind constructs parameters. Things we cannot see, their parameters could be anywhere. I could be anyone. How would I know? 
Where did you go? I went to fetch something. But I have to admit that I did not fetch what I would have liked to have done. Is not that the chair you sit in? No, it is the chair I look at. Anxiouser and anxiouser I get as the years chop past. Nothing brings peace, nothing contentment, except the spectacle of that chair, the far side of the fireplace, empty, imperviously empty. Is not that the chair you sit in? No. That is the chair I look at. Chair flowering with emptiness. Chair brimful of magnanimity. Its multicolored selflessness hanging loose with threads of affection, loyalty, generosity, than which there is no more remedial force in the face of ignorance and spite. Is not that the chair you sit in? No. It is the chair I look at. <laughs> 